very, very, very special guests um, waiting in the back room for us now. Um, I'm going to be inviting her on very, very soon. She goes by the name of Kaya Ra. Um, just drop a comment below if you are familiar with the work of Kaya Ra. I'm sure many of you guys are. Um, if you guys are not, well, you are in for a treat, let me tell you, because this woman is a very, very powerful woman. Um, as I've mentioned multiple times throughout this week, she has impacted my life in so many different ways. I was just catching up with her before we jumped on this call and I told her, I was like, man, honestly, I wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to create this space and I wouldn't be the, at the level of embodiment that I am at right now if it wasn't for the work that you do. Um, she is a, an, the, the oracle and the author of a best-selling um, book, uh, a sacred modern day codex called the Sophia Code. Um, and this book has changed my life. I've, uh, I've read this book multiple times, especially this year. Um, and it's, it's, it's such a powerful codex. I recommend every single one of you guys, if you haven't um, listened to it, if you haven't read it, I recommend to go, go get, go purchase the book. I recommend to, you know, um, get it on Audible. I've got it on Audible. I listen to it often um, whenever I feel the calling to um, and it really is just such a sacred text filled with so many potent codes so many powerful activations and every time you listen to it you you will get a completely new set of downloads the same way that you will get in this container when you listen to these interviews over and over again when you do the um activations over and over again you get different downloads because your consciousness is expanding um you know every day as you as you evolve through this ascension and um as your consciousness expands your your capacity of uh taking in new insights new wisdom increases so it's it's it really is like a modern day bible <laughs> it's, it's it's like a bible that i feel like everyone should have which is why i'm just sharing it with you guys now um you know i've i've you know been you know just really you know diving deep into her work this year and it's absolutely amazing so um really really excited to have this you know this this amazing leader on today so um, kaya ra is the international best-selling author for the sophia code a celebrated divine feminine teacher and designer and the ordained oracle of the sophia dragon tribe surviving multiple death near-death experiences she was directly initiated by the Ascended Masters and Archangels since childhood for how to facilitate quantum leaps in conscious evolution. Kaya Ra, is, Kaya Ra leads an international movement, a modern day mystery school of Ascension curriculums and offers the Heaven on Earth Prayer Collective as a free ministry of her nonprofit, the Sophia Code Foundation for activating the sovereign divinity of humanity. Her artistry, live events, media appearances, and online broadcasts are hailed as the next generation of revolutionary spiritual leadership. And I'm just, I'm just getting chills from reading that. And, you know, that's all truth because I'm a living testimony of that. Um, as I've shared multiple times, I wouldn't be the embodiment of who I am today unapologetically, and I wouldn't have integrated the you know that 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 divine feminine energy into my masculine being if it wasn't for this codex guys i can't i can't stress that enough um that that the experience that i shared with you on monday the lifting of the veil the um the 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 activation that i had from that experience was a direct result of the you know the the sophia code chapter that i was listening to um it's a very very powerful book She's a very, very powerful leader. And I feel like right now is just the perfect opportunity to invite this amazing uh, soul, this amazing leader, this amazing warrior of light into the space now. So in the comment section below, guys, just send all the love, um, drop all the hearts below and um, welcome our sister onto the screen when she is ready. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Jesse, what an incredible introduction. I feel so honored and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for your support of the Sophia Code. It's just been incredible to get to know your community and some of the leaders in your container. 
uh, this week. It's just been, I'm just so happy to be here and so excited about this dialogue. Thank you for the invitation. You're very welcome, sister. Thank you for being here. You know, it really means a lot to, to myself and everyone watching. Oh. So, um, so, man, there's a lot to talk about, and I, and I feel like we could do a whole, <laughs> we could do a whole seven day retreat on just this because, or, yeah. or like, a, like a year long retreat. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot to be talked about, but yeah. um, you know, I feel like it's really important. You know, there's there's a lot of really important things that we can speak on today um, as we close off this New Earth retreat. Um, and prepare everyone for the, the rest of this year and going into 2021. Um, and I feel like a really good place to start um, would be to to speak on Sophia and 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 who and what Sophia is, um, so that people that are new to this work can 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 understand. That's a great question. Thanks, Jesse. Okay, so Sophia, the moment I even hear the word Sophia, I go into an altered state of consciousness. Um, you know, we, there are many, many words for the divine mother on this planet throughout the ages. And um, when I had a larger than life experience of being physically taken into the light of, I guess, what you would call the light of God, uh, from the perspective of the divine mother it was the voice of the divine mother which is one aspect of god right we've got divine mother divine father it's it's the one source light but for me at that time in my life and for this mission i needed to connect with the holy mother of all mm -hmm. life and not a goddess sophia she made it very clear you can read it in the preface of the sophia code i was so shocked when it happened i i i, I was stumbling and confused and overwhelmed and i i said are you the the Greek goddess of wisdom, she's like, no, I am the one divine mother creatrix of all life. Are you listening to me? I have a message of sovereignty for humanity. And I thought I am listening. You have my full attention, but please turn down the volume and the lights are way too bright. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it was, it was one of the most extraordinary, you know, positive experiences of my life. It was completely life changing. So um, what's interesting about the name Sophia is the same number of letters as source. So we, we refer to Sophia interchangeably with the word source in our cosmology, but it was very, very important that this sacred text came to us through a divine feminine Christ conscious consciousness perspective. Mm -hmm. um, there was so, there's so much to heal around the oppression of the patriarchy, thousands of years of patriarchal rule. And to, we can't even understand what true divine masculine is without reconciling first with the divine feminine, because as we all know, both feminine and masculine is born out of that mother, right? That original source point. So mm -hmm. if we can reconcile with the mother wounds, and, and step into that space of, of embracing God as the mother too, then we, you know, whatever you call God, I know that's a loaded word for a lot of people, source, great spirit, uh, Buddha consciousness, Christ consciousness, these are all interchangeable terms for us. So that's a little bit about Sophia and what, um, I guess the only other thing I would say about Sophia is like, she's the under unconditional presence that's loving us continually no matter what we're choosing to explore in the worlds of form, there she has no face, we are her faces. She is the black womb of nothingness, the primordial void. And she's also the light, which is the foundation of all of creation. Mm, beautiful, beautifully said. And it's, it's so powerful because I, I shared this when I first connected with you the other week. And um, it was really interesting how I stumbled across your work because I, I hadn't heard of you previously and I was, you know, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, working with different guides over, you know, throughout my life, um, you know, different ascended masters as well. And, you know, this, it was this year, I remember I was, um, I was going through, you know, a few initiatory experiences of my own. And I was in a really just deep, deep meditative trance state, you know, one night, I remember I was out sitting up by the water underneath the stars. And I was just asking for guidance around, you know, what I needed to do to support humanity at this time because that, that this is when COVID was hitting the lockdowns were happening there was fear oh, everywhere yeah. it was crazy and um and then the message that came through to me was very simple it was um you need to you need to activate the Christos and the Sophia within you and the the and I was like what's that 
they said, <laughs> they said the divine masculine and the divine feminine you need to embody it both of them together um within you and then and then i got these flashes of all these different amazing people throughout time who have been able to do this um who have been able to integrate these divine feminine masculine energies within themselves to you know embody that christ light and then i was like okay so this was the first time hearing the word sophia um and then a couple of days later it popped up on my um i can't even remember where it popped up but sophia code popped up and i was like okay I need to read that. And then I read it and I was like, boom, it was like everything I, I needed from that one mm. message. So, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And, and, um, you know, I would love, you know, just again, just for the people that haven't, are not familiar with your work, I love just to ask you the question, like, how did you, how did you discover Sophia? And, you know, what was the experiences that led you to discover this, uh, you know, beautiful divine feminine mother? Uh, well, you know, when Sophia came into my life, I was terrified of the feminine. And I know that there's a lot of women around the world and men that are terrified of the feminine because we have such a wounded perspective of what the feminine is. Mm. Um, you know, the feminine had deeply betrayed me and as well as the masculine. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with my work, you can read in the Sophia Code that I'm a survivor of uh, military human trafficking and different military programs. Uh, from birth, I was actually born into these programs um, and, and managed to stay alive because of the Ascended Masters. So I was working uh, with the Ascended Masters and the Archangels from, from the earliest memory. Uh, they would help me stay alive. And every time I would have a near-death experience, I would go to different parts of the universe and, and, and bring back the light that I needed to keep going and the light that I needed to to continue to help as many children as I could as I was surviving what I was surviving. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've always been psychically open. Uh, I mean, for starters, I was born into a, you know, a psychic training program. So it was, um, there was that, but you know, it was really, this lifetime was a volunteer mission. I've had multiple channels confirm that for me. And I've always known it in my soul that I was asked to come here and, and I was asked to, to, to survive that and to bring the codex here. And mm -hmm. um, by the time Sophia had contacted me, the whole Sophia Dragon Tribe, I was like, I had already been professionally channeling for about, uh, I don't know, I think it was like, it was about five years or something. I was used to hanging out with angels and archangels and putting myself back together and using my gifts to help others. And, but I was still a hot mess. I mean, I was broken in a thousand pieces, but what I noticed was that no matter, whenever I channeled, whenever I offered healing work or messages from these beings, that the light was pure. And that, that brought me so much hope. But when I was in Mount Shasta, um, and this happened where the whole house, I could see all the molecules of the house melt down into the atomic structure. And then everything went into the light, except for me and my laptop. <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> you're like, what the, <laughs> like, you know, like matrix style, like, is this, I can't even believe. And I just was like, you better start typing or you're never going to believe that this actually happened. Cause there was no trauma involved. There was no medicine involved. I had just finished making dinner. You know what I mean? I was sitting down to work on a book. It was just, it was a, I was working on a, I thought I was working on a, a, a particular book, but it turned out the book was hunting me, the real book, which was the Sophia Code. So they were just getting me ready to actually blast the doors of my mind wide open and have this conversation with the entire High Council and with Sophia. And, you know, really made sense once I met her and them why I survived. Like it really put the pieces together for me that they were the ones that were advocating for me um, and that were protecting me, um, you know, and that were the, my strength to be able to survive what I went through. Beautifully said. It's, um, you know, and, and, you know, when you read the Sophia Code and you, and you learn about all of the different Ascended Masters yes. on the High Council, um, as well as many other Ascended Masters that yes. weren't mentioned in the Codex, exactly. they, all, they all have these, these stories. They all have these, uh, these trials and tribulations, you know, from basically from the get-go, right? From the yes. very beginning. Um, you know, I remember uh, one, one particular Ascended Master that I've been very deeply connected to from, from pretty much the moment I came here was Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, and that's because my mom, you know, I was, I was, my mom was uh, very connected to him as well. 
And um, I remember from a very young age, I, I was always just so um, emotional when I learned, when I, when I would connect with his story of how he was crucified and, and, and the whole, all, everything that he had to do. But, you know, what I've learned through, through my journey and, and, and reflecting some of the lessons from his life into my life, you know, we all have a cross that we have to carry, right? And that cross um, is different for everyone. You know, sometimes it, you know, sometimes it could be, you know, a, a situation like you've, you've experienced or, you know, maybe maybe something different. But we, we all have these these trials and tribulations, whether it be big or small, subtle or, 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 or not, um, that that prepare us for this work that we're doing, you know, prepare us for, for the, this mission um, that we're on. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to ask, like, what is that mission exactly you know we, we, we you you speak on um the golden age you know last night when i was when i was channeling that was coming through heavily as well um what does that look like to you what is the golden age well it's really interesting because the ascended masters call in the sophia call code call the next golden age the age of miracles and mm. when i first channeled that for the book i thought fabulous Yes, let's do that. The golden age of miracles. And you know, over the past few years, I've I've actually gone back and questioned them like, okay, this is this is really intense what's happening on the planet. Like where how on earth are we going to manifest a golden age? And they said you have to remember the word miracles was involved. And she, and they were say every golden age is different. And what's so, you know, it's like if you read about Isis's golden age and her chapter in the Sophia Code or Hathor's, it is like this, what we consider this over the top golden age of ascension technology and temple spaces and everybody is walking around gorgeous and well-fed and well-dressed, you know, it's just like, yeah, that's what we think about a, a golden age as, right? <laughs> uh, but and that's not to say that that can't happen. It's just that we have another thing that the Ascended Masters teach us is that golden ages are about a thousand year cycle. Mm. So there's a ramping up. You know, we we think so short term because we're in these localized human bodies. You know, we've got Amazon can deliver something the next day. It's just like, where's my golden age? You know, and it's like, <laughs> um, you know, if you put things in perspective or a couple million years of evolution that we don't actually have a record of on this planet, it's like we've had many golden ages come and go. Yeah. And they usually last anywhere from 500 to a thousand years. Sometimes we're lucky where they get actually, they extend a couple thousand years. But even Isis mm -hmm. shares in her chapter in the Sophia Code, it's like, it requires a, an enormous amount of effort from a collective consciousness to maintain a golden age you mm. want a golden age everybody has to be in their sovereignty and everybody has to be serving the golden age everybody has to mm. be willing to take responsibility for their embodiment to co-create a golden age mm. so you know when you think about it in that term it's just like we just want some guru not us but like humanity in general is looking for some guru to like wave a wand and be like golden age time you know send down the spaceships and everything's great and all the bad people go away and it's just like that's not how it's going to happen the mm. golden age of miracles but like if you if this is why the codex is so one of the reasons why it's just so incredible it's like you're being initiated in every single aspect of what you need for being a participant at co-creating the golden age so in the white buffalo woman chapter right mm -hmm. she comes in so strong oh my god writing channeling that chapter was i listened to that i listened to that um that chapter yesterday oh, <laughs> Again, man. It just awesome <laughs> amazing yeah yep. so you know, she's talking about commanding miracles and that means like believing in every cell of your body that you can actually command the rains to fall kind of essential when there's geoengineering ruining the ecosystem right now you know what i mean it's just mm -hmm. like you know, commanding miracles where human trafficking stops i got news for you human trafficking is far more in depth than most of humanity wants to actually acknowledge it was like, mm -hmm. like most people can't even it blow their hair back to actually understand that we mm -hmm. are living in two parallel worlds yeah. Um, it, it's just like being the ability to command miracles. That is the age of miracles when each and every one of us loves ourselves enough to activate this divine genome within us, which is what happens in the Sophia code. Mm -hmm. And then we learn how to embody this crystalline consciousness and we collectively walk as masters, just like Jesus, Mary Magdalene, mother, Mary, white Buffalo woman, Kuan Yin, just as they did. But think about like all of us being that. You know, because it's not up to a single figure anymore, right? 
That's why yeah. I love this gathering of the New Earth Retreat. There were so many leaders involved. It's and, it, and there are so many leaders attending this retreat. You know, just even mm. just because you're not on this screen doesn't mean you're not a leader, right? It's yeah. like we all need to be working together. And the Sophia Dragon Tribe called that, um, you know, working as the one golden dragon light body of Christ on the planet because the dragon is the ultimate mastery. And that's a mm. lot of like deep you know, surrendering the ego into the divine operating system of our higher self. And that doesn't happen overnight. It does. It, it's going to take all of us committing to a life of sobriety to our sovereignty. So what does that mean? Sobriety from codependency, sobriety from viral programming, sobriety from laziness, right? And really getting into it, getting over the fact that, yeah, it's going to be a roll up your sleeve situation to build the foundation for a golden age. But do we, but I mean, do we want a future for our children and our grandchildren? Like, yes, we have to be willing to do that. So mm. that's a little bit about that. So we actually, from the inside out, create the golden age, which is the ultimate form of mastery. It's not expecting something outside of you to suddenly become a golden age for you. It's like birthing it out from mm. your heart, from your life, from your embodiment, from your downloads directly from the source. Mm, absolutely and in the in the final chapter uh kiko 777 the sophia dragons they speak about how you know they are cre creators or birthers of universes and galaxies yes. and they're yes. made in the, in the image of sophia as we are made in the image of them so that we have that same uh what is it the heart womb that has the ability to create these yes. these, these universes and that's something that has to be embodied right and I love that chapter because that's what, you know, what you li literally guide people through activating is that golden dragon light body, that experience that I shared with everyone on Monday, where I was, you know, I, I was just taken over by this like advanced consciousness, this, yes. this, this master and performing all the stuff that I had no, re uh, you know, previous understanding of. It was one of the most life changing experiences of my life. And I, it, it, it's, um, like you said, it's not, it's not just a, overnight you know uh amazon delivery type of experience because because you have to you know it, it really requires walking that path right and and that and that path you know i feel like it's so important now in this day and age because like we're at the we're we're like you said we're we're the um we're the way showers for this for this golden age so that means that we have to actually be the ones who create it and, and we're the one creating the blueprint. I mean, there's blueprints left by these masters that have shared this with us through you, through your codex. But, you know, we're, essentially we're, we're, we're creating this blueprint um, because, you know, having these types of conversations with like general pop population, you know, it's um, the, 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 the social conditioning, you know, really, really blocks people from, from this understanding, which means there's only select few people on the planet right now that has the ability to, embody right it's and, and we and, and it's through the embodiment that we can embody that that will give the opportunity to to the to the rest of the planet right as we as we go through this oh my god when the sophia code was first released that was really beautiful by the way everything you just shared so on point when the sophia code was was first released it went viral in four days internationally mm -hmm. and we were getting emails from all over the world of people saying they were passing out when they first touched the book like they couldn't even read it mm -hmm. and the reason for that was the this energy this consciousness this transmission was so powerful and it hadn't been on this planet in a really long time mm -hmm. and it was literally like a lightning bolt into the darkness of this world and and so those first wave people who read the sophia code i you know if you're listening right now and you've been here with me since the beginning I just have so much respect for you. Thank you so much Thank for you. choosing to embody your higher self in this divine genome, just as Jesse so beautifully described, um, you know, for these past four years with us on, on our international ministry is just like, it, it, it's so amazing because now people are coming in, they're like, I have to activate my divine genome. And I, I think you're, I don't even know what to think about you lady, but I'm going to do this thing because I know I got to do it. <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah. cool. I don't care what you think about me. Just get your divine genome activated. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know so it's, um, it is really outside of people's boxes, but what's so interesting for our team is that we're seeing on an international level, people flocking to these teachings because they can feel the sovereign resonance mm -hmm. invoking their sovereignty 
You know, mm. we can only live in slavery for so long before we want to barf all over ourselves. It's just not helping, you know, anything. It's already crazy enough as it is. And then to like, you know, just keep yourself in slavery. It's just like punching yourself in the face over and over again. Why? Mm. Mm. And, and, you know, we've been talking about sovereignty a lot. And, you know, I feel like that's like one of the key missions right now is, is to reclaim that sovereignty. And it's one of the huge yeah. leading points of the Sophia Code. Um, you know, for people that might not be, not, might fully understand what that means, you know, from, from your perspective and from the perspective of, you know, the High Council, what is sovereignty? Oh, man. Wow. I'm so grateful you asked that question. All right. So think about this. If we are all birthed from God source, the, the source, whatever, you know, I know people have a hard time with that word sometimes, but perfect source light, right? If that's where we're coming from, and what Sophia declares in the beginning of the Sophia Code is we are made equal with her. And that's, that is the root, that is the fundamental original root wound that has kept humanity enslaved is the belief that we are separate from that whole and equal divinity with God, right? Because mm. the church has been pounding that into us for thousands of years and not just the church other even mystery school lineages throughout mm. time like you got to follow this guru you got to go through this buddha or this guru or this angel or this teacher to get directly to god and it's just like it's just not like that yeah. like we come directly from the source and everything in this planet has been programming us to think that there's there's some glass ceiling where we can't reconnect with the source that by the way can never we can never be disconnected from so it's more than just being connected to it it's remembering that you are it now if you are it then fundamentally you are entirely whole and invincible and omniscient uh, you you possess every same quality of god right mm -hmm. so what does that make you it makes you sovereign not just from this world but from all worlds jesus taught be in this world but not of this world and this is exactly what he was talking about he's like you are sovereign you are holy you are daughter and son of the most high you do not belong to these pharisees you do not belong to any roman empire you belong to you and when we when we claim that you know that direct relationship that we can have with our source it's very affronting to the ego structure yeah because it's, it's so much safer quote unquote safer it's like un, it's like uncomfortably comfortable to not be in our sovereignty to expect some god outside of us to save us instead of c coming into the holy creator right within us it's we are mm -hmm. a mirror image of god so that that's kind of the a roundabout way of, of explaining what sovereignty is. There's nobody above you and there's nobody beneath you. There's no God punishing you in the sky or rewarding you, by the way. Mm. You know, it's just like all blessings are continually flowing without ceasing from the sacred heart of the source all of the time. And we're either choosing to shut ourselves off from it or open our hearts up to the remembrance of that much love and blessings. It's always flowing to us. The more we shut down and separate, the more opportunity there is for the ego structure to get super weird and do mm. super weird and evil things. And it's just like, you know, we have free will. And that's the other thing of sovereignty. It's like, how do you, how are you ever going to know that you are all powerful and all divine if you don't have sovereign free will to explore what that really means? Mm. Like mm. being sovereign, kind of not as a big deal as we might make it out to be because it, it's really about, are you going to consecrate your free will to divine will, Right. Because what that's saying is like, are you going to come into alignment with source, like source that's blessing all? And are you going to come into alignment with a service, right? That, that is honoring the sovereignty of all or taking advantage of people's free will, right? People who haven't awoken to the truth of their divinity yet. It's like, we're all very powerful people. And the more conscious we can become of how powerful we are, the more we're going to stop acting like codependent fools. And the more we're going to start stepping into how much we can help one another from a really whole place within us. That's what sovereignty is about. Mm -hmm. A little bit anyways. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's so beautiful. And, and, and this is the time where we, we really um, are being called forth to, to reclaim that because like you said, we, we live in a world and I think, I think this was from the Sophia Code, it probably was. Um, yeah, it was. We're addicted to duality. We're addicted to the to the system. We're addicted. We're, we're attached to it. And I shared this the other day as well. We're, we're actually yeah. attached to it. And there's that part of our ego that doesn't want to break free from it because we want to stay, you know, 
you know, dependent upon the system. Um, but the, um, the, you know, the, the reason why these times are so <laughs> fun and interesting is because that's slowly crumbling, you know, so like what, what people are holding on to and what people are like clutching to is, is actually starting to crumble. You know, we're, we're, we're seeing it here massively in, in New Zealand. I'm sure it's the same over in the States. Yep. You know, we're just becoming so aware of, you know, the, the, the systems in the world that aren't actually here to serve us. And I think something that would be really, you know, really important to, to, to speak about, and I'd love to hear your perspective on this is, you know, there's a lot of work to do, right? There's a lot of work to do on this planet. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of fuckery that's been happening, excuse my French, that's on the, on the planet for a while. And um, there's a lot the of- French love the word fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Just kidding. Go on. <laughs> You're good. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot there's, yeah, there's a lot of fuckery going on in the world and 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 you know what what I remember when I went through my that that golden dragon light body initiation uh, you know a few months ago I remember that I saw what needed to be done like I saw the like the clear vision with my eyes what needed to be done and I saw that there's a lot of people that were being positioned in the planet to to, to create this change um, but I'd love to hear from your perspective you know like how you know when, when we start diving into what happens in the world when we start diving into the corruption and you know the trafficking and you know all of the you know the censorship that's that's slowly starting to increase 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 you know how you know how do we stay in alignment with the mission and contribute to to this uh this evolution this evolutionary process that's a great question thank you um you know all i can speak about is what i teach about mm. and what i teach about in the sophia code mystery school is we call in the sophia dragon tribe in these eight key codes and we create a circle of protection and empowerment around us every morning mm. and we we call in our higher self-consciousness to fill every cell of our body and to fill out that circle of empowerment every day and so what we're doing there is we are surrounding ourselves with masters, because if you want to become a master, you better surround yourself with masters, right? It's the mm -hmm. only way. Mm -hmm. And then you're there, there witnessing you, guiding you and mentoring you day in and day out, because that's what the Sophia Dragon Tribe promised they will do for those who walk through these initiations. Mm -hmm. And so as you practice standing in that circle of your divine feminine, divine masculine Christ light, you then practice anchoring that crystalline light to the center of the planet. And then you can start to strengthen your golden dragon light body technology, which has the capacity for you to be in a continual communion and connection with source consciousness beyond this physical world. It keeps your connection clear. That's why that technology is so essential right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember in the Sophia dragon tribe, the Sophia dragons dropped the, my golden dragon body on me. I was like, what? You want me to do what? And then you want me to write about what? I was like, come on, this is like, who's gonna believe me? And they're like, you better do this because humanity needs this technology. Mm -hmm. And um, and what's interesting is like, it's not a new technology. It's like, it's been on this planet before. Mm -hmm. um, in, in ancient times, it's just that we, de we desperately need it now because it is literal technology that pierces this matrix and keeps us connected to what we call the seventh plane, back to the original source point, not a dimension. It's the highest, clearest place. It's going back directly to the source. Mm. It's not It's not some <clears throat> fifth dimensional blah, 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 because that's just connected to this earth plane. You need to go all the way back past all of physical reality, past mm. all the planes of reality, because these, mm. these overlords that are controlling different parts of the matrix, like they are, they exist in the fourth and fifth dimension. Like they yeah. exist in many dimensions. So it's just like, you need to go back to your source. And that's what these, that's what the spiritual technology does. It keeps you um, connected and it protects your physical body. It interfaces with your human chakras. And it mm. also activates different parts of your divine genome where you're activating um, pretty much like superpowers of your body. So your body mm. and your mind and your heart and your emotions start functioning in a new way. Mm. And I wouldn't have believed that this was possible unless I had test driven it myself first through seven long years, long and painful years of watching the process of what happens when you activate the divine genome within you, 
you begin to anchor an increasing amount of your higher self's light, which your ego structure can only handle a certain amount at a time. That's why we go back and do the initiations, the activations again and again, because every time you do, you're ready to accept more of who you are and into this world. Yeah. Your human body is the key. It's mm -hmm. the anchor. It's mm -hmm. the boots on the ground anchor. You, you know that. And mm -hmm. it's just like, and so when we do these initiations, more and more crystalline light is anchored within the technology of the divine genome. It strengthens the golden dragon light body technology. So your ego structure starts to go through a percentage process of surrendering into your light. So at the beginning, it's just like, all right, man, I guess 10%, right? 10% of the control or the codependency or the addictions, like, all right, Oh, it feels kind of good. 10%, not so bad. My ego structure didn't totally flip out. A couple months later, you're operating at 25% of your higher self's light, right? Mm. Six months later, you're like, damn, I am, I'm functioning at 60% of my higher self's light right now. I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. I'm thinking different thoughts. I'm choosing different behaviors, you know, and, and within several years, you are literally a different person. So if mm. you want to know how to be in this world that is truly, truly, truly broken, like this particular matrix that we are all talking in right now, you, you've, you, to be here and be the light, you have to go back to the light and practice anchoring it how we do in the, the mystery school, the Sophia Code mystery school and with these masters because they promised us. I've met with a lot of ascended masters. I've met with a lot of beings, a lot of star nations. Nobody turned on my lights the way the Sophia Dragon Tribe did. And here's why, because they don't want anything from me. They're, they are hundred percent in their sovereignty. And that's all they, like, if there was one thing they want, they just, they just want me to talk about our sovereignty. Mm. You know, it's just like, and I'm happy to do that. Cause what else is there to do? Mm. You know, <laughs> like, that's the most important thing to do right now. So, um, you know, it's just, there's no agenda other than sovereignty. Well, then that's sovereign, mm. right? Mm. It's for the highest and best good of all it's freedom. Yeah. So our light and the technology of our physical body, of our spiritual light bodies, of our direct connection to the source, all of it works together as mm -hmm. one, which is how it's how we're going to download the solutions that 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 actually resolve and, and break us free from this matrix. Is it going to happen all at once? No, but it will happen. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And I, and and here's the thing. The ego structure wants to know. Well, I got to know all the all the details. And it's just like, no, you don't. You just, we, you can go take a nap now and I'm going to rest in the truth of this divinity that knows the greater plan for this planet and for my life, right? Mm -hmm. And using those divine feminine principles to start learning how to live life from that perspective where we don't have to control it. We can trust. And the more we let go and trust into this light guiding us, we're like, oh my God, we're tapped into infinite intelligence right now. Mm -hmm. And then you get a collective of people tapped into infinite intelligence co-creating together that's how we download real solutions in a broken world. But, you know, it takes, takes a lot. It just it takes commitment and faith and it takes community to stay faithful, right? Where we mm. encourage each other and inspire each other. Mm. I was taking part in one of your um, recent, uh, probably a few months ago now, the unshakable faith ceremony. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> we, we were watching. And, um, and it's that, that's like one of the keys, you know, I think, you know, because it's, you know, we, we, you know, people can listen to this conversation and like, yeah, I'm inspired, like activate my higher self. I'm going to embody this Christ light. And then like, you know, some shit happens on the news and it's like, oh fuck. And then the ego starts to, you know, to, yeah, to flip yeah. out, you know, and, and those are the tests, right? Those are the, the, like, that's why it's, 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 um, it's, this is like the, the real training grounds for us to actually embody this, this, this higher self and embody this and, and create this, you know, deep intimate connection with, you know divine father and divine mother and source you know on this planet um yeah. you know and it's 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 so important and I, and I love what you said of, and about um you know downloading these divine solutions because i remember when i was when when all this stuff popped off this year especially i was like and i don't i don't really know like i know i can do something but i don't know how to do it i don't know exactly what that looks like yeah. um and then i remember just over the course of the months you know as i was activating i was going through the initiations they were just coming. It was just like all these things were just coming. And that's why I've just been in this crazy, just like manifestation mode over these last few months. Cause I'm just like, I, I just need to, I need to do this now. And I've got this, I've got the capacity to do it. I've got the ability yes. to buy that, that technology that you speak about. It's, it's the real deal, fam. Like I'm telling you guys, like I, I, 
You, you know, <laughs> you probably haven't heard me push something so much, you know, <laughs> these last seven days. But um, but that technology is 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 the real deal, and I've and I've felt it. You know, I've felt it, and you know, something that came through when when I went through that initiation was um was that when you know this technology is installed into your into your field into your physical body and as your body starts to you know evolve into this into this into this technology and and and, and work with it um it's you know the, you're always positioned in the the right place at the right time um and all of the opportunities and all of the people that you need to connect with will always align perfectly um and your mind doesn't have to understand that and i think that's you know that when you when you have that inner knowing that that you're you're looked after and you're backed by these amazing beings that are here to serve us and to support us and to help us evolve you know when you can have that inner knowing then that really helps with that unshakable faith that you talk about because you know i'm i'm at this point now within myself personally where you know if you know and, and i'm sure i'm going to be tested more on this over throughout my lifetime but you know i'm i'm not afraid anymore you know i'm not afraid you know I'm, I'm not afraid of you know of of the 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 uh limiting constructs or the limiting beliefs that my ego once was afraid of you yeah. know there's this once upon a time where my ego didn't or i'm gonna say i didn't want to you know do this i, I didn't want to do this work because i was afraid you know i was afraid of the darkness i was afraid of the evil i was afraid of and that was because i was afraid of these aspects of myself that I, I hadn't had the opportunity to look at but 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 now i feel like you know with everything that you're sharing and everything that you teach um and embody is you know is to you know activate that master within like you said you know and, and i feel like that's that's it you know and, we, and when we can all do that we can we can really co-create an amazing world um but it's 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 like it's crunch time like it's it's the, this is the time to do it yeah this is end game you know i have some very powerful mentors and they they are they're always saying that to me they're just like you know keep going don't stop like this is this is an end game lifetime and mm. um, from everything that i've seen everything that i've survived you know and everything that i continue to know about these many worlds that are all interfacing right now at this time it's like I work endless hours for this movement because there's nothing more important than us activating our sovereign divinity. It's just, there's just nothing more important. And moving from spirit, I talk about, I've been talking about this a lot, like moving from spiritual infancy to spiritual maturity. Like a lot of people are looking for like these spiritual highs, right? Like, mm. oh man, I, I got this, I got, had this incredible out-of-body experience. I got super high and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then they keep chasing this spiritual high. But what they don't, what many people don't understand is like your own divine light is the greatest high that you will ever experience. And if you can learn how to embody it, like in your body and every cell and muscle fiber of your body, if you can learn how to anchor it and be grounded on this earth plane, it, there's nowhere else to go. It's like, who cares if we're in the freaking middle of this like global war of annihilation? It's just like game on. You know, like, let's do this. What, what an incredible time to be alive and show ourselves what we're really capable of. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's it can be very intimidating. But then once you get over it and you get into it and you're just like, mm. OK, well, there's nowhere else to go or God wouldn't have put me here. You mm. know, so <laughs> let's find out what this divine light can do. It gets really interesting, way more, more, way more interesting than sitting in a corner, shaking, being afraid about the whole thing. And, you know, it's very real. It's very real to be afraid of the evil of this world. It's like, I've survived it. It's just like, <sighs> there are still days and there's still nights where I'm just like, whoa, I can't believe I'm still alive. I can't believe I'm not, you know, it's like, I can't believe I get to live another day to share this message in this ministry. I, like, this is clearly God's protection. Like, mm -hmm. I know what that world is capable of. So it's just like, I don't want anybody to feel bad about feeling afraid. You know, it's just like, when we come into a relationship with our divinity, we get to just figure out, like we get to decide that we can become in a relationship with all of our feelings, right? It's like, I have a relationship with anger. I have a relationship with fear. I have a relationship with grief. I have a relationship with rage. And because my divine light has a relationship with it, it doesn't have to operate me. Mm. And I can receive the information that it's sharing with me, right? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, maybe the timing about this particular decision, maybe we just kind of pace ourselves here. Not about 
letting fear control us, but like, how are we strategizing the chess game, right? How are we strategizing the, the battlefield of love? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's interesting how much our emotions, how much information our emotions are carrying for us and providing for us. Mary Magdalene talks about this in her initiation in the Sophia Code. And, and the more we become the master of those relationships with our feelings, with our thoughts, you know, like what you were sharing, it's like, we don't, they can't terrorize us anymore the way they used to. Those thoughts and feelings they don't, they don't terror. We don't use them against ourselves anymore to terrorize ourselves. We're choosing, we're choosing to step into our sovereign creatorhood. And I just want to say that for, for those of you who are just in the beginning of exploring what that would feel like, it's okay. If you feel like you're falling on your face a hundred times, learning that mm. it's like, I can't say, I can't even explain how many times I was actually totally terrified of my mission, you know? Yeah. totally terrified of getting on a video screen and putting a mic on totally just completely you know anxiety for hours about it and and beating myself up about it and low self-esteem and all sorts of you know head trips that are just so painful yeah. you know it's like that's what the light of our divinity is healing within us and mm -hmm. and it's okay to feel all of it when you know you know that that light within you is is on the job whether you can feel it or not, you're going to pull through and you're going to get stronger and brighter with every day that you embody your divinity. Yeah, beautiful. And, and I feel like those, those are the, you know, that's part of the reason why we came here. Like, like going back to what we said at the beginning about carrying that cross, you know, the cross can be anything. It can be the self-doubt. It can be the shame. It can be the judgment. It can be the totally. self-sabotage. You know, these, these are the crosses that we all carry. And, and um, you know, you're you're a beautiful example of that, you know, and I'm sure every single person in this container listening to this live or on the replay, you know, is going through that. And you know, I, I love what you shared about that because you know, that's that's really, you know, you know, for me personally, I can only speak for myself, but you know, that's that's really the 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 the, the tests that we created for ourselves when we came here. You know, we, we, we chose this lifetime. We, we didn't just like randomly pop up in this world at this time. We didn't just randomly show up on this video, having listening to this conversation. You know, this is all divinely orchestrated by our higher selves, you know, up in these realms. And, and you know, we chose to come here and, you know, we chose our lifetimes. We, we chose the, the parents. We chose the, the challenges. We chose these these traumas that we have to experience and, you know, and, and we chose these, all of these so that we can remember exactly what you're speaking about. We can remember our sovereignty and so that, that we can allow for that, 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 you know, who we truly are and what we truly are to, to shine through us, to allow for that healing to take place within us. And, and it's when we can continue to do that and just be patient with that and just yes. one step by, you know, step by step by step and just stay, stay connected like you said you know have your practices anchor in this light every single day that you you know it, it, it will slowly start to change and like you said over the course of a few months and a couple of years you turn into a completely different person you become a dragon right absolutely <laughs> you become a golden dragon yeah so i, I would i would love to ask you just you know we're, we're, we've got a we've got a few more minutes left and i would yeah. love to um you know ask you um there's so much more to ask but i'd love to ask <laughs> Who are the Sophia Dragon Tribe? Because I know you're going to be introducing us to them in the next session, and we're going to be doing a ceremony with them, which is really beautiful. Yeah. I'm sure many people already know who they are. Um, but who is the Sophia Dragon Tribe, and why are they called the Dragon Tribe? Because I know, I know from um, you know a lot of you know, like you said, patriarchal rule, a lot of um, you know, especially in you know Christianity, there's a lot of uh, demonization on dragons. So, <laughs> yeah, there is. You, you know, you know all about that, right? I'm sure oh you my know. God. <laughs> <laughs> when they told me to call him the Sophia Dragon Drive, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what are you trying to destroy my career? I haven't even started yet. <laughs> you know, and I, when I, I mean, ultimately, you know, when I was taken into the light and I met, I, when I met the Sophia Dragons, I mean, it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my whole existence. I mean, I, I, it's like the most holy thing to see these angelic beings that are continually praising at the throne in the heart of, of, of this divine mother, like birthing all of her creation into form. Like the, the, it was so startlingly beautiful. And, 
and I realized that, that these incredible, they're like they're the holy seraphim. The Bible talk about the seraphim. And what's interesting is that that word means the holy creatures of God. It doesn't have a definition beyond that. And when I saw them, I knew I was looking at the holiest of all seraphim beings. And I was like, whoa, okay, they're dragons. Well, that's going to get a little mixed up on earth or, you know, like, or they've mixed that up a lot on earth, right? So, and of course there's the whole like issue with different reptilian races and all of that. And I was like, this is just a barrel at monkeys. Like I can't believe I'm getting involved in this. But when I work with the Sophia dragons, there's nothing for me other than the heart of God that's more powerful more beautiful and more of an invocation into my full sovereignty. Mm. You know, it, they, they, you know, it's like we presented the, the human faces of the Sophia dragon tribe first, just to get us ready for the star nations and for, you know, yeah. the, the, these other higher dimensional angelic orders that are so beyond our concept of reality. Yeah. And, and they just want to initiate our highest good and our greatest liberation. It's going to take, a dragon medicine to liberate us from the place, from the space that we're in right now. It's that bad. Like, it's mm. just that real. Mm. You need, you need beings that are the size of, of galaxies to live. Like that's the kind of liberation we're looking at because, because the oppression we're experiencing on this planet is not just native to this planet. There's a lot of off planet trafficking happening as well. Mm. And so it's like you, we need angelic orders of this depth and breadth and holiness to guide us in how to become the masters, the boots on the ground masters uh, that command the miracles that stop these atrocities from happening. You know, in ancient times, the ancient times, the dragons were revered as the highest form of mastery on this planet. And, and so that's what the ascended masters are invoking uh, by, you know, really asking for this seraphim order to be included as, as the heart, like the, the heart of this um, council. So this high council, there's many high councils of ascended masters. This particular high council was called forth in, in chapter uh, three. They talk about how they were called forth by Sophia. You know, it's like here on earth, we'll self-organize into groups or retreats or, you know, and, 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 and it, they do it too in the ascended master realms, but that's not what the Sophia dragon tribe is. The Sophia dragon tribe was called forth by the divine mother as a high council of exceptional master teachers on how we can embody this spiritual technology and how we can embody our sovereignty specifically in these times of, of, of great tragedy and atrocities. It's like, that's the level of this high council. They come directly from the high, they were called, each of them were called in and asked directly by Sophia to be a part of this mission. And so when I met them, there were too many faces to count. There were thousands of faces from every part of the universe. Mm. And um, I was very overwhelmed, uh, but I also felt a great, great sense of love. And I felt like I'd found my family mm. and I knew, I knew I had come, I, I was being welcomed back home into, you know, they, not that they ever left. Mm. They were always there. I just wasn't ready to accept it. It wasn't time. So, you know, what I love about their mission is like, they're willing to mentor. They promised me they're willing to mentor everyone that wants to mentor with them the way that they mentored me into this mission. And that was important to me because there's a lot of masters that just come and go. They just flit in and out and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not what we need. Like, it's not what I need. I need like constant surveillance. Like I need constant <laughs> mentorship. Like keep me on my path. Keep me, you know, keep me honest to my mission. Like, you know, there's a thousand ways that my own wounds and ego structure would have me running for the hills, but not in the presence of the masters. And that's the promise that they made through the Sophia code. We will always be with you. We will always mentor you. We will never leave your side. And that's just, that's what I needed, you know, as an orphan in this life, that, that, that was, wow, that was a life changing promise. And now lots of people around the world are experiencing the gifts of that same promise. So that's a little bit about this very special high council of ascended masters. They're very unique. Mm, they are and I remember it was really interesting because I was you know I, I connected with a few of them before I actually came across the Sophia code and I, I was like I was afraid of them right because of my my, uh, my my feminine wounds were just like oh, oh. I don't know <laughs> I yeah. don't know about that but but it was it was so beautiful because when I leaned into it and you know I, I embraced their energy and you know especially when I came across the Sophia code and it says you know you know actually you know developing these deep deep and meaningful relationships with these masters um, you know, it, 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 
like you said, the mentorship is constant and they're always there and they're yes. always supporting, they're always supporting you. And there's no exclusivity, you know, which is which is beautiful because you know I've I've been you know deep into mystery school you know teachings for many you know for for a large majority of my life and I I know like you said before there's a lot of distortion in many of the mystery schools and religions and you know belief systems in the world um and there is this hierarchy hierarchy that you have to you're 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 told that you have to go through and I think you know the the beautiful thing about everything that you've done and and you know everything that this uh, council is sharing is that they're here all the time and they're, and, yeah. they're, and they're just waiting for you to connect and um you know and i guess today you know in, in a few hours we get the opportunity to um to do that right yeah yeah i'm really excited about it thank you for the opportunity to share more about them today yeah beautiful so well i think that, that that's about us for time on this first on this first session family um one final thing i'd lo love to ask just to prepare people for the next oh. session is um you know what are we going to be doing in, in our ceremony today um what would you like people to you know um prepare and is there anything you want to share with them before we close off this this particular session and enter into the next one it'd be good to have a glass of water or some water on your altar in your sacred space to have a candle lit you might want to have your journal nearby to take notes after we do the activation um we're going to do a preliminary uh, activation of the divine genome, the crystalline chromosomes to get people ready for walking through the section two, the Sophia code, all those initiations. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to be um, connecting with key code 999, which is the star nations. I'm really feeling that, um, you know, I know where I'm from and it, I, the star and the Pleiades that my family sent me from to be here at this time. And so we're going to be connecting with some Pleiadian Christ light energies as well. Mm. And I'm just, you know, that work with the Sophia Dragon Tribe. Um, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a blaster, but my intention is for us to get blasted with a lot of grounding uh, and, you know, really embodying that in a really good way. So it's, it's going to be very activating and it's okay to lay down and rest. It's okay to close your eyes. You don't have to look at me. You don't have to do any, like just let go and allow the blessings to flow. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and sister, I just want to say, you know, you know, thank you so much, you know, honestly, you know, your, your story is so inspiring, you know, what you've, what you've survived, what you've embodied, what you've found, what you've created through that darkness you know, I, I, like I've got so much gratitude for you and, and I'm sure every single person watching this, um, you know, this session has so much gratitude for you as well. So we're just sending you so much love and thank you so much for being here today. Oh my gosh, it's such an honor. Thank you so much for your support and so much gratitude to your, our, all of our beautiful communities that have gathered today. It's been such a pleasure to meet with you today. Thank you. Well, welcome back guys. New Earth Online Retreat 3.0, day eight second to last session for this amazing retreat we're back and i'm going to just wait for a couple more minutes for you guys to jump on live and as you join guys i just want you to really just prepare your space you know we're about to enter into a sacred ceremony with um you know our good friend and dear sister kaya ra she's going to be leading us through a very very powerful ceremony and activation today which is going to be a really beautiful um you know introduction into uh, you know, her work and into the, the powerful, you know, the, the powerful codes that she has to offer us. So um, I'm really excited for this, guys. And as you guys jump into the video, like I said, just create your space, you know, with, wherever that is for you, just get comfortable. Um, if that's lying down on the couch, if that's, um, you know, sitting on the floor, you know, maybe, maybe sitting on the grass, sitting by a tree, you know, whatever feels good for you. I know you're lighting some incense. If you have any anything else that you want to add, I've got my um, I've got my sacred heart crystal <laughs> that I'm holding here, which is um, it's like heated up right now. <laughs> it's gonna be powerful, guys. So um, so yeah, family, we're about to dive into this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna invite my sister on now, and what I would love is just to send you know for you guys to just send some love to our sister as she jump as she jumps on board. Hey, Jesse. Hello, we're back. I'm so happy to be back with everyone. Thank you for, for creating the space for the ceremony tonight. My pleasure. It's my pleasure. 
So before we start, sis, is there anything that you would like to share? You know, you know, just you know, pre-intentions or anything like that for the for the tribe um, that you would like them to know before we jump in. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a couple messages that came through when I was meditating, getting ready for uh, this ceremony. The first of which is, um, and I I found this a lot in my international ministry, is like, it's, it's, it's surprising how many people don't feel worthy of their sovereign divinity. Unconsciously, it might not be a conscious thing, but unconsciously, we've, we've been trained to feel that, that we, we don't have a right to it. Yeah. And that we're not good enough for it, but it, it's already ours. Mm. And so when I take people into this state of consciousness and t- to go to the temple of Sophia, there's often people that I'll see psychically hanging back. Yeah. And, and often it's because of oaths, oaths and vows that they've taken in other lifetimes where they, they, they made promises that they wouldn't surpass their teachers or the Buddhas or the angels or their parents or their religion. And it's like, this is a lifetime we need to shed all of those oaths and vows and come back to our, you know, come back to our direct connection to the source. So Mm. I just want to offer to everyone that it's safe to uh, it's, it's emotionally, it's psychologically, and it's, it's the safest thing you can do actually is to reclaim your divinity Mm. by far. The, the, the other thing is far more dangerous leads to addiction, codependency, self-sabotage. Yeah. Um, the other th- message that came through is like, there's a lot of star seeds that are on this call tonight and that are in this retreat. And um, as a star seed myself, I often, everyone would always try to pressure me to, you know, oh, but you're human, you're human, you're human, like get in, get in your body. And, and, and their intention was good because they wanted me to be really grounded. And I, and I appreciate that in my elders and my, my mentors, mm. but it wasn't actually until I fully accepted the depth of what a star seed I was, that I actually felt safe to ground here on earth. Yeah. So it's important to understand for those star seeds that are on this call tonight, that are, that we're going to travel with during this ceremony. It's like, we're here to embrace the truth of who you really are. We're not asking you to be anybody but who you are. We need you to be exactly who you are. Mm. And it's, it is the beautiful powers, the gifts and the talents that you bring from these ascended civilizations into this world that actually make you a really safe person to be here and to help others. Mm. You know, we as star seeds, we often feel like so weird about ourselves, but the truth is like we're the, some of the most sane people on the planet. <laughs> yep. especially when we start to ground into our human body now mm-hmm. if you're just grounding into your human body without your higher self connection as a star seed you know that's just not a good time it's just it's just uh just a lot of pain but if you're coming in with your the light of your divinity in your human body it's just like game on mm-hmm. so we need to reframe that this human journey in our human body is a get to right yep. even though when we're alone and just discovering that we're a star seed, it can feel like we can feel so alienated, right? Yeah. The alien in the room. Um, <laughs> the so that, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I just wanted to share that to put everybody at ease. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not here to ask you to be anything other than who you really are, right? That's what Sophia asked for us in the Sophia Code. Um, and, you know, finally, it's just like, there's a massive amount of blessings that want to come through. I was just sharing with Jesse um, before this, us going live that you, know, you can receive as much or as little as you want from this meditation. You can come back to this meditation and you can receive more. You can titrate how much you receive in this present moment and come back and receive more later after you've integrated whatever feels right for you tonight. Um, doesn't have to happen all at once. Uh, what happens sometimes when I channel is there's so much energy pouring through that people can tend to glitch or or back up. And it's like nothing. I just want to assure everyone, nothing's being forced onto you. It's a gift. It's like Christmas. But if you don't want all your Christmas presents all at once, that's okay. You can come back and you can listen to this meditation another time or several times and Jesse's going to be right here with you to help support you and what you're receiving. And I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity to be able to share this work tonight for those, especially that are here for the first time. The mm. Sophia code is truly a living transmission. And, and that's, that is, um, 
I really say that with a, with a, you know, a lot of respect for the word transmission. Mm -hmm. Um, it's take kind of taken lightly on this, like right now in the new age culture. And that word was not used lightly in ancient times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, so there's a lot that's going to come through and thank you for the opportunity to share it this evening. Beautiful. Thank you so much. sister. All right. Everyone's ready to go. All right, let's go. Okay, so um, before we travel anywhere, we're always going to protect our body and we're always going to protect um, our, our sacred space by consciously claiming our body and our space before we uh, ascend in our consciousness. So I invite everyone to visualize a beautiful circle of light around your body at this time. It could be any color of light that you want. Uh, and then I'd love for you to imagine that there are eight directions on the circle of light. And on those eight directions, we're going to invoke the first eight revealed key codes of the Sophia Code cosmology. In the north, I'd like to welcome a very good friend of mine who loves you very much. She's very excited to be here with you this evening. Her name is White Buffalo Woman, and she is key code seven of the Sophia Code cosmology. She of a thousand white clouds and thunder beams. And in the Northeast, I'd like to welcome beautiful, beloved, winged Isis and her beautiful golden ankh of life arriving in the Northeast with her wings raised high. She's just greeting you with so much love and respect and gratitude for your willingness to be a part of this ascension journey in this lifetime. In the East, I'm welcoming the radiant Hathor, key code two of the Sophia Code, she of a thousand voices. And as Hathor arrives, you may feel the Hathor star nation arriving behind her, supporting her as this angelic choir, the order of Ophelim, uh, opening our body, hearts, and minds to the truth of how multidimensional we really are, how unlimited we are in our sovereign divinity. In the Southeast, I'd like to welcome uh, the, such a liberator of consciousness, Green Tara, key code three of the Sophia Code, she of a thousand stars. And Green Tara is arriving with the 21 emanations of Tara behind her, as well as the entire order of Dakinis. In the South, we welcome key code four of the Sophia Code, Mother Mary, she of a thousand roses. And Mother Mary is arriving. I want to assure everyone in this call completely free of any religious doctrine context. This is the Mother Mary that, that we know from the Sophia Code as a divine feminine teacher activist and speaker, as well as a high priestess of Hathor. She was trained in the mystery schools of Egypt, highly educated, a very powerful guide for your divine purpose, welcoming beautiful Mother Mary in the South. In the Southwest, I'd like to welcome Mary Magdalene Key Code 5 of the Sophia Code, she of a thousand angels. Behind Mary Magdalene is arriving a cinema master, Jesus, and the entire order of Magdalena. In the West, we give thanks for the arrival of key code six of the Sophia Code, Kuan Yin, she of a thousand waters. For those of you who know her mantra, we could say her mantra together three times, which goes a little something like this. Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum. Behind Kuan Yin is arriving uh, the Holy Father, Ascended Master Maha Avatar Babaji, we give thanks for his presence arriving like a still waters, supporting Kuan Yin's divine feminine Christ transmission. In the Northwest, that eighth direction on your wheel of light arrives the Sophia dragons, the holy seraphim of the divine mother. They're very kind and they're startlingly beautiful. And they're gonna just help you feel this unlimited freedom within your heart. You may feel the, the breath of life being blown over your consciousness. It's like stardusted breath of life as the Sophia dragons arrive, refreshing your consciousness. And I'm just really wanting to give thanks that White Buffalo Woman is reminding me in this moment that we're also going to invoke the entire White Buffalo Star Nation behind her, including the order of Sky Grandmothers that are arriving at this time, these ancient Sky Grandmothers that we read about in White Buffalo Woman's chapter. And I'm also giving thanks for Black Elk, uh, who's arriving as well with the Sky Grandmothers. It's good to see you. Beautiful. Now, within the circle of light is your body. 
but we now invite you to connect to not just your body, but the center of the earth. We welcome Sophia Gaia, Mother Earth, beneath you, rising up to meet you. She is delighted to be in communion with you. She is the foundation of your existence on this planet. And so we invite you to open up your root chakra and feel that energy moving down your legs and connecting all the way down to the very heart of Mother Earth and feeling how grounded your body can be within this circle of light and empowerment. And just noticing that as you open up and expand your energy to the circumference of the circle, that you can really feel yourself right now. You can feel your own energy. These ascended masters are not here to take over your energy or your body. They're here to stand side by side with you so that you can feel yourself. So often in our life, there's the pressures of different relationships and um, I just, life is very complicated. And sometimes it it can be difficult to feel where you begin and other people end. And, and so in this circle of light, you can connect to others through your sovereignty, through the wholeness of your own embodiment. And so at this time, I wanna welcome the presence of your higher self, filling that circle of light that your body is within. Now your higher self is going to be radiating out from the central sun within your heart. And it's expanding out as a sun of light all the way out to the circumference of your circle, you may begin to feel rays of light just coming out of your shoulders and your back and your heart and your eyes, filling up that circle of, of empowerment that you're in. But I'd also invite you to open up, spiral open the crown chakra at the top of your head and just feel that beautiful waterfall of light that's now descending directly from the source where your higher self, your soul is always in communion with God's source, whatever you want to call great spirit. And there's waves of water, there's waterfalls, waves of light descending through your crown chakra, filling your body, heart, and mind with the light and the holy fire of your own higher self. Now, if you're feeling a bit of a blockage over your crown chakra, uh, I invite you to allow the presence of the Holy Mother, Sophia God, whatever you call Holy Mother, Holy Father, to begin to gently clear the blocks around your crown chakra so that you can feel this light pouring there you go pouring all the way through from your crown to your root it's time to open up and let the love in this is the unconditional divine love of god that wants to pour through you without ceasing it's always flowing to you but you got to open the door so as we open the door at the crown of your head you may begin to feel that beautiful waterfall of light running down the back of your head, running down the back of your shoulders, opening up the back of your heart, flowing down your throat, down your face, refreshing your eyes, this waterfall of light that is your own Christ light flowing through your heart, down your torso, running down your legs. And it's just pouring in now. There's just so much more of you that is filling up your body, filling up every cell of your body filling your emotional body, your mental body, and all of your spiritual light bodies. And at this time, I want to, uh, I'm giving thanks for the openness that I'm feeling as everyone's really becoming fully present in their bodies. And I invite you to consider that your body is quite safe now. You're connecting in in an amazing way with these, these Ascended Master key codes who are holding it down for you. And this would be the moment where we begin to ascend in our consciousness to shift into a seventh plane, Sophia Christ conscious space of uh, where instantaneous miracles and divine knowing exist. This is connecting to your omniscient consciousness of your higher self. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'd like to invite you to imagine that a part of your consciousness can now travel above your head while another part of your consciousness remains completely within your body and that you can be conscious of both of these realities simultaneously. And so we're going to begin to travel above your head, above the ceiling of wherever you're sitting, or if you're sitting outside above the trees, uh, traveling through the sky. And now we're gonna just fly right past the sun, the moon and the stars past the galaxies, the planets, all the different star systems. And I want you to, your consciousness to fly all the way to the edge of the physical universe, the multiverse. 
You're going to fly through layers of light and darker colors and then brighter colors. And we're going to get all the way beyond the third plane, beyond the fourth plane, beyond the fifth plane, where billions of dimensions exist. We're going plane to plane to plane. And we're going to, we're passing now through the fifth plane. And this is the realm of the ascended masters, but it's also the realm of other beings as well. And we're going to get to the very edge where there's that golden light. And you're just going to shoot right through, through this sixth plane, which is the plane of the laws of this universe. But don't stay there. You're going to shoot through like a hot knife through butter. And you're going to look for that doorway of light and allow that doorway of light to magnetize you back to the very source light of all life the Divine Mother Creatrix of all life. And I'm seeing many of you um, flying into that space in your consciousness, arriving now. And for those of you who are wondering, you know, can I really go ascend all the way into this consciousness? The answer is yes, you can. This is your home. This is your mother. This is your father. This is your true heritage. It's your true divinity. It's where you came from. So come on up and take a, just dive into this ocean of light. So let's take three, just three conscious breaths together within as we connect to the source light. And you might feel yourself just diving into that beautiful mother's milk ocean of light and just letting go of all the particles of form that your consciousness is so, you know, becomes very attached to in your human journey. Just like dissolve into that ocean of light let it rearrange all the particles of, of what you think you are. Just let go because we can work, we can, we can rebuild our, ourselves. It's just not a problem. And just keep stretching out into the infinite light of that one source light presence. And you may feel your inner child. You may feel different parts of your consciousness expanding, blossoming, opening, open, because this is an ocean of divine love of unconditional presence, of joy, of bliss. This is, this is that divine mother consciousness that's always so happy to see her children come home. Oh my God, so happy that you're here. I've always been here. And just letting yourself melt into that love and how much she accepts you and loves you exactly as you are. She doesn't see anything wrong with you. What she sees is a very brave warrior of light. You have traveled across the cosmos in many, many different forms, fulfilling purposes and missions according to your soul's um, destiny of growth and evolution. And it's good and it's holy and it's right to come back to the source of light from which you emerged, from which your soul was given birth. It's good to take a little break every day and return into this space. And when, as you immerse, immerse yourself in this, this ocean of light, you may begin to feel that radiance burning back thought forms and ideas of who you thought you were. And that's really safe to let that go because so often we get so attached to such limited ideas about who we think we are. And I see that everyone's arrived finally within this light and that makes me feel really happy for, for all of us because when we all ascend together, it's just like, that's how it really, when we all come together and do this work together and accept that we're all this worthy, it's like, that's how ascension happens. We, know, we don't, no soul left behind, right? No one in our family left behind. We are a family of light. And so as we welcome each other home back into this light, we feel that, that communion, that family reunion. And I'd love to invite you to one of my most favorite places within this ocean of light, and it's the Temple of Sophia. And the way um, that you're going to start to you know, find your way to the Temple of Sophia is, I'd like for you to start to notice the rippling of white dragon scales. And you can begin to walk in the light with your brothers and sisters, right? with all of these souls that are with you right now in the New Earth Retreat and head towards those white marble steps, these beautiful white marble steps. And the marble has, has veins of living gold that are li literally the marble is breathing. It's white marble with these golden veins. 
And as you begin to ascend these steps, good. Oh, so beautiful. Everyone looks so beautiful. You're going to start to feel layers shedding off your shoulders. You, your body is going to rematerialize as you walk up these marble steps into the Temple of Sophia. There are a lot of steps. And by the, excuse me, by the time you get to the, 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 towards the top of the, the, the temple entrance, you're going to notice that you are in ascension robes, whatever that looks like for you. Could be, it could be your favorite color, could be, um, could be white uh, with gold. Uh, there's a lot of white and gold in this temple space. There's a lot that reflects the light. And there waiting for you at the temple entrance is Mother Mary and Kuan Yin. And they're walking you to this beautiful um, <clears throat> entryway in a baptismal space. And they're going to be anointing you with water, with holy water, uh, water that's been blessed by their consciousness. And they're, they're bringing that healing water to your heart and to your third eye. And what I'm hearing from Mother Mary is like, this is a blessing for us to see ourselves more clearly right now for the heroes that we came here to be. And it's like, it is a very heroic act to be human at this time on the planet. And none of us should minimize that. In fact, we should be thanking ourselves every day, honoring and blessing this journey for the offering that it is back to life. And Kuan Yin is bringing her hands to the back of your heart and you may begin to feel this beautiful waves of, of pink compassion filling the back of your heart. I'm witnessing uh, many people are, who are receiving this blessing from Kuan Yin that there are hardened layers of abuse and of rejection and alienation that are just being peeled back by Kuan Yin and it's happening in a very gentle and kind way. Um, abuses of your ancestors, just allowing those, those, those spaces that have been protecting the back of your heart. What if your own sovereign invincible light could protect your heart now and not like the hardenedness back there? We've got to be willing to, to release the old layers of defensive coping strategies so that we can take on the spiritual light bodies of our higher self, which are truly uh, the most potent form of protection and regeneration for our human experience. And I'm seeing many of you, as you let go of those layers on, in between your shoulder blades and the back of your heart, and many of you are beginning to allow your beautiful angel wings to unfurl from the back of your heart. And some of you have white wings, some of you have white with blue uh, hue to it, some of you have purple wings and red wings and black wings, and they're just so beautiful. Whatever the color of your angel wings are, we're just so grateful that you are unfurling uh, the rainbow of gifts and talents and insight and angelic qualities that, that you are. And so what I'm seeing right now in the temple gateway uh, across this plaza is like so many of us are, are remembering in this moment that we truly are angels in human form. And how good does it feel to just relax into who you really are amidst all of these other souls that are, that are choosing to remember who they are now too. It's just better when we do it together. It's just more fun. And you can just maybe like, you know, stretch out your angel wings, kind of like feel them lift up high. Maybe you could even show them off a little bit. To some other people there just being like, hey, check out these wings. This feels good. And like feel them stretching out of the back of your heart. Mary Magdalene is, is approaching now and she's blessing the back of your heart with these beautiful healing oils as Jesus comes forward to bless the front of your heart. See, the thing is, is that your angel wings are technology too that interface with your golden dragon light body. And sometimes it's one of the easiest technologies to activate first, because who doesn't love an angel, right? It's, this, it's one of the safest things for us to actually explore about who we really are. And as Mary Magdalene is anointing the back of your wings, you may feel uh, some of that oil going in and just bringing a soothing balm energy <clears throat> to some of what you've experienced in this lifetime that may have felt very challenging or painful. And as Jesus touches your heart, <clears throat> you may begin to feel these waves of blue energy radiating out from your heart. 
And you begin to hear the voices of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of angels singing within the temple of Sophia, welcoming you home to the heart of the Holy Mother. And so now that you've been anointed and adorned and your wings are unfurled, I truly hope that you can see in this moment how worthy you are to join the masters of light and all of these angelic beings that are celebrating your arrival. So I welcome you into the temple of Sophia and you'll be walking past these beautiful white marble pillars. And as you walk into the main temple complex, you'll see that there have been all of these thrones created for every single person that's here. And there's a throne that has been created specifically for you. And you are invited to go ascend the throne of your own I am presence. As you walk towards your throne, you will begin to notice the thousands of ascended masters that have gathered here in celebration of your arrival. You may even begin to notice that there is no ceiling to the temple because there is this radiant light. And you realize that this is a concentrated area of Sophia's consciousness. And you'll notice that there are these two magnificent Sophia dragons that are spiraling in the center of the temple of Sophia. Their scales are singing holy, holy, holy over and over and over again. And they, they have these little lightning bolts coming out of their scales as they sing. And they, there's tears of, of like, that look like diamonds because each of the scales has an eye because they're seeing in every direction simultaneously. They're witnessing the creation of the Divine Mother as they co-create with her the multiverses of form. You are in the sacred heart. That is one aspect of that heart womb space of the Holy Mother. That nothingness is what is supporting all of this light radiating out. We don't have to get too hung up on that because here you are in your throne. Isn't that interesting? This beautiful, beautiful throne that your name is inscribed into. And at this time, I welcome you to just sit back into this throne. Allow your wings to find a really comfortable position behind you as you sit in this throne. And I'd like to welcome in the archangels and the star nations to greet you as well, who are also a part of the Sophia Dragon Tribe. And as they step forward, um, they're welcoming you to, okay, that's what you want to do right now? Got it. Each of you has a member of your star family. You may have met them before, or maybe this is the first time that you are feeling or seeing or hearing them for the first time. And they're saying this is very, very important for everyone in this call to understand that you are, you are in some way connected to a star family that's not necessarily on earth. And if they are on earth, they may be existing in the inner earth. They may be a star nation living within the earth. But regardless, they, are, they represent an ascended civilization that your soul is deeply connected to. And at this time, um, as directed by the Sophia Dragon Tribe, I now invoke that trinity of constellations that anchor a specific frequency of Christ consciousness on earth. And we start with the Andromeda star system and the archangels and the masters of light from Andromeda. And then we also invoke the Pleiadian star nations that are... Uh, co-creating that are a part of the Sophia Dragon Tribe and the Pleiadian Archangels. We also invoke the Syrian Archangels and Ascended Masters that are a part of the Sophia Dragon Tribe. And we welcome that trinity of star nations into this space to activate the trinity within you of the divine masculine Christ, the divine feminine Christ, and that golden one source Christed essence that over, that's like an overlighting presence of the masculine and the feminine within you. These are all facets of your higher self. And as you allow them to activate this trinity within you, you may just become filled with that light, just blasting through your mind and your heart, just peeling back the layers of, of again, of who you think you are so that you can just finally relax into who you really are. And one specific family member is going to be walking up to you on your throne and they're going to be blessing your third eye and your heart your, and your solar plexus at the center of personal power. 
you know, hearing from all these different members of, of our star family is just like, it's time to really relinquish the idea that we're alone. It's time to really accept that you have a, a family that's enlightened and watching over you, that you are a part of a, a team with. And they, and that your family is working with the Ascended Masters and is working with the Archangels and all of these councils of light. And you were brave enough to be their representative on earth. And in this moment, there's a, there's like this reckoning between you and your family. And I'm just going to be quiet for a moment. So if there's any messages that you need to receive directly from the star family or the star family member in communion here in the Temple of Sophia, like, Please just take a few breaths to receive that message now. I'm hearing them say it's like, it's just really important that you stop doubting yourself now because there's gonna be so many ways over the next three to four years that, that, that those who are running this planet are gonna to try to cause you to doubt yourself on a whole nother level. And you've got to remember this moment. And so we call upon your higher self and your older soul and the Sophia Dragon Tribe and your star family to imprint within every fiber of your soul, like turning the wheel of time, like the, there's like this, turning of a wheel that's happening for all of us in this moment you may feel like it's almost like your your heart like turning rotating a complete 360 it's like okay game on full cellular soul remembrance of who you really are because millions of souls on earth are going to be depending on us to not waver in the remembrance of who we are and what a get to, what a privilege, what an honor that we get to serve at that level. Everybody thinks the Ascended Masters are so cool. Why are they so cool? It's because they, they practiced unwavering faith in who they are and they held the bar high for millions of souls that were grappling with their suffering. It didn't know how to hold the bar for themselves. That's what we're doing as a collective right now for the entire planet. We are raising the bar and we're saying, this is where we stand and we're not going lower than this. We're only going higher. And that's what's happening in this moment is like, we are now receiving our families, our star families, the recognition, the honor of the masters. They're saying, this is our turn now to hold the torch, to carry the save these sacred flames forward. But it's important right, to understand that like, they're right here with us co-creating this side by side with us. Now I'm witnessing that the masters are very concerned about some of the sacral chakra and root chakra damage. Um, who's coming forward now, please? Hathor and Green Tara are stepping forward. Their incredible quantum healing light and medicine. Uh, they're just asking you if there's any like addiction uh, to self-sabotage, addiction period, uh, to any substances that you're ready to let go of that's, that's getting in the way of, this, of being sober to your sovereign divinity and like the truest high of your own divinity and your own higher self and, and the self-mastery that, that arises out of that sobriety is just, they're just like, give it, you know, this is what's called a divine intervention. It could just be being addicted to thinking poorly about yourself, you know, minimizing your worth. Or, you know, you know, maybe it's challenging for you to declare your personal boundaries because of trauma or abuse that happens. It's like in this moment, in this temple of Sophia, we welcome that beautiful Christ light to come in and cleanse your root chakra, your sacral chakra, your solar plexus chakra, these, these earth chakras that can be filled with the, the Christed power of your own higher self, your own divinity, the, this Holy Spirit of the mother the divine mother's presence that we are immersed in. You may feel a lot of things just draining right out of your body. It's just not a problem. You know, we're in the seventh plane. So it's like instantaneous miracles and divine knowing everything that gets released is instantaneously dissolved when we're in this space of unconditional love and pure light. 
pure source light. So take this opportunity to just let it to just let it just drain out and dissolve. And then we also invoke your higher self simultaneously filling up the root, the, the sacral, the solar plexus chakras, front and back. I'm also calling in Jesus and Mary Magdalene and Joan of Arc as well. I forgot to invoke Joan of Arc as uh, one of the saints of the Order of Magdalena. And they're coming in to help cleanse uh, any entity, um, any kind of attachments, toxic cords, anything that's really holding you to suffering in other lifetimes or in this lifetime, any demonic influences, binding those energies and completely clearing them through the unconditional love and power of the Holy Spirit that's here. Because there's just no reason to, to be punished anymore for who you really are. And just feeling <clears throat> the tendrils of any codependencies or addictions attached to those energies, just also being dismantled, deprogrammed, and completely lifted up and out of your field. Just like this is the power of your own higher self, your own I am presence, your own oversoul orchestrating all of this. So like whatever you want to release today, whatever you're not ready to release is all okay. But it is a pretty cool opportunity to let go and let it in. Archangel Michael is also approaching at this time, along with Babaji, Mahavatar Babaji. And you may begin to feel like these pathways on your right and left side. What I'm hearing is like these pathways are connected to your past and your future timelines. And Hathor stands at the very center right ahead of you. And she's like, choose the quantum timeline thread that is for your highest potential now. And you don't have to understand what that means. You can just feel through your third eye, through your heart, through your sacral chakra. Now that they're clear, what are you being magnetized towards? Let your energy flow in that direction beyond your understanding because there's a timeline that's praying you into a new reality, aligning you with your greatest potential. Again, this is a, this is a divine intervention from the Ascended Masters. It's, it's, it's a gift. There was, you know, your life before you entered this temple, and there's going to be your life after you, after we conclude this, this activation. It's just like your feet will be on a, a new path. It's just real. And as you feel into that future timeline, there's a higher self embodiment that is so brilliant and radiant ahead of you, before you. That's you. That is you now, and it's that that's you calling you to you in the future into the future now, beckoning you forward. Feeling that angel of who you really are. No longer apologizing or shamed for the star seed energy, the angelic energy, the mission that you came here to fulfill, the gifts and talents that make you unique, the perspective that you offer us. When you embrace every bit of that within you, that's, that's the timeline Hathor is guiding you to, to gaze upon and to fully reconcile with. It may mean giving up people's circumstances, locations, ideas of what you thought you were even doing before tonight's meeting with the Ascended Masters. It's just like, I get it. That's strange. But it's, it's what we all want. We all came here to live in our highest sovereign potential in this lifetime. I'm also witnessing the Sophia dragons now coming in and there's like this whirling of an unlocking down the back of your spine. This is a Kundalini activation from root to crown. <laughs> Great, they're coming in now. There, enough of us has cleared enough and we've received enough that now that initial uh, for those of you who haven't had the divine genome activated at all within you this is especially for you for those of you who have activated your divine genome with the eight initiations of the sophia code we're going to go deeper and integrate on an even greater level the crystalline consciousness of your higher self in human form so the sophia dragons have now turned their gaze upon you don't worry they're super loving and super amazing so it's not a problem 
and their crystalline gaze is activating a full body awareness of the truth of your crystalline Christ, Christed nature that's never left you, no matter how uh, traumatized, abused, wounded, or just you know depressed you feel about being human. <laughs> your crystalline Christ light, your true divine sovereign nature has never changed. This is what's beckoning you forward into a greater awakening of who you really are. And that consciousness is now flowing into the subatomic universe of your DNA. Within every cell of your body, there are billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of electrons. Look into the light of the electrons within you. And then go even further into the primordial, vast nothing, the universe of that black space that exists within you. It goes on forever. But it stay close to the biological DNA. And as you peer deeper and deeper into that black womb of no thing that exists within you, you'll begin to feel or sense that you're getting closer to the motherboard of crystalline chromosomes that are calling into your consciousness. Remember me. Remember me. I am the living covenant within you. I am your divine inheritance. I am the motherboard map of your divinity that goes with you into all your incarnations. And you may begin to hear the bells of sovereignty ringing within your body, heart, and mind. And as you come, I just invite you to just immerse your consciousness into that motherboard of crystalline chromosomes. These crystalline chromosomes in the subatomic universe of your inner reality contain every divine attribute of God consciousness that you are. And all of the ascended masters are, are watching and witnessing and supporting you to begin to be curious about this motherboard of divine qualities that already belong to you. You don't have to earn them. You don't have to sit in 20 hours of meditation a day to get them. They already exist within you. It's, it's how you get to reclaim yourself from, from you know, the viral programming and slavery of any world, not just earth. Any warp-torn planet, you can incarnate into as an omniscient, invincible angel of light and heal anything because of this divine genome. And because of these divine qualities, which can never change in the worlds of form. And we welcome your higher self and the Sophia Dragon Tribe to begin to flip on the light switches within this motherboard through the power and presence of your of your own Holy Spirit, your own I am presence, gazing upon this, these crystalline chromosomes. And I invite you to just imagine bridges of light that begin to expand now from your divine genome to your biological DNA back on earth. Send those bridges of light within every cell of your body into your consciousness, to your biological DNA, And just breathe into these activations that are welcoming you home to who you really are. And Jesus is bringing um, his hand to your forehead in a mudra. And then I'm witnessing Buddha and Mother Mary on each of like, your shoulders. Creating this trinity of consciousness that's just allowing you to let go. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Knowing that you may begin to feel a bit of a whirling arising, almost like there's a spinning, a rotation within you. These are this is the divine genome starting to activate and awaken within every cell of your your human body and begin to light up within your cells. Your, bi your biological DNA might feel confused, <laughs> like what's happening? Just breathe into the light, baptizing your consciousness in every cell of your body. This is the light of that, of that motherboard washing over your DNA. 
recalibrating your DNA and also flushing out right now ancestral trauma, uh, ancestral belief systems. And this is all, by the way, happening on the throne of your I am presence within the temple of Sophia. And now white buffalo woman approaches with her sacred chinupa. Holy, holy white buffalo woman. And she begins to make prayers over your body with her chinupa and with her sacred bundles. And then witnessing those beautiful white buffalo spirits gathering around each of us. The white buffalo star nation is very connected to the star seas on this planet. I have a particular fondness for the souls that have traveled and volunteered to come so far across the universe to be on earth at this time. Now, I'm starting to witness um, these columns of light that are running from the seventh plane, from where you're sitting on the throne of your I am presence, all the way back to your human body. So Hathor and white buffalo women who are quite connected, and interestingly enough, are opening up that stargate portal between the different planes of reality for you to start merging your consciousness and all of these activations back to earth, back to wherever your human body is receiving this transmission. But you are going to remain conscious of your presence in the temple of Sophia, as well as the presence in your human body simultaneously. You're not going anywhere. It's all, it's, it's just, it's just your consciousness is expanding to include more of you simultaneously. The truth is that one single electron in your body exists everywhere in the multiverse of form simultaneously. You cannot pin an electron down because it exists everywhere at the same time. You got billions of them inside of you. And as Hathor reveals to us in the Sophia Code, that means you exist everywhere. And the journey of awakening is remembering through the Ark of the Covenant, that holy vessel that your human body is, that you have access to everywhere simultaneously. So we're just practicing two locations at the same time. It's just really no big deal. But it's kind of a really big deal if we start embodying this level of awareness as a collective of souls on earth on behalf of humanity. Pretty cool. Talk about being unlimited beings starts first in our consciousness. And then, wow, look out what, for what can happen in the worlds of form when we're embodying that much awareness simultaneously. Coming back to the Temple of Sophia and our awareness. There's a final activation that your star family and my star family would really like for you to receive in honor of this activation of your divine genome and this beautiful road of life that's ahead of you, this new quantum timeline that you have initiated as directed by your higher self to live in your greatest sovereign potential in this lifetime the gifts, the skills, and talents that you're no longer going to deny and that you're, you're ready to reclaim and fully embody one self-loving step at a time. Well, there's a special blessing for people choosing to be that willing and that disciplined and, you know, that courageous. And so I welcome from above the temple of Sophia, this beautiful star family transmission. It's this this star from the Pleiades that's descending over the entire temple. And you may even begin to feel that, that incredible light just completely washing through your consciousness, like almost just everything goes blank. This is a, this is a Christos activation of the highest order <laughs> from the sacred divine feminine heart of the Pleiades, that feminine and masculine union and as it fills you, it activates the soul star within you to grow brighter and brighter and brighter. And I welcome that sun of your heart to expand beyond your body, to expand within all of your light bodies, to feel the Sophia dragons beginning the process of activating your golden dragon light body, which completes in the key code 77 init 777 initiation, the Sophia code, getting you all prepped up and ready for that initiation and feeling that Pleiadian transmission filling us and unifying us at this time. Take a deep breath into your ancient ancestors and who you really are. 
there's so much uh, spiritual infancy happening on earth. Sometimes it can really get you down and make you feel weary. But when you're in the presence of who you really are, surrounded by these truly advanced beings and consciousness that, that you're a part of, it's like taking a bath and remembering why, why it's worth it. Because usually we exist in that reality. And it's just temporarily that we come down to earth to bring that consciousness to all the people who are addicted to the nightmare that don't even know how lost and, and suffering they are. It's, this is the same consciousness that Jesus and the Marys descend from into this world. It's the same consciousness that you're connected to. It's your family of light, pulsing, pulsing, radiating, expanding. Burning back the darknesses, the sadnesses, the grief that's ready to release, honoring the passages. You may feel the, that sun begin to travel up and down your spine from root to crown, from crown to root, and down your legs, just burning out just any debris from this lifetime that no longer serves you. It's beyond infrared. It's just like, it's like playing galactic soul star cleansing. Let's do that. And just feeling how much your, your, every cell of your body is just drinking in that Christos light. And how it's sealing up all these activations and unifying and knitting them together uh, within your presence here in the Temple of Sophia. And all of the Ascended Masters are raising their hands in, in this beautiful blessing over, over your, um, your body there on your, I am, your, the throne of your I am presence. And they're also blessing us as a collective. And you may begin to feel the feathers in, the, in your angel wings like solidifying on a whole nother level. Almost like, like they're becoming like, they have like this metallic energy to them. And this final rites of passage, Joan of Arc is walking up to you and she's, she's sealing these rites of initiation on behalf of the high council. And she's offering her support and her mentorship for, for when there are those challenging moments back on earth. You're like, is this worth it? She'll be right there by your side. She's like, oh yeah, this is worth it. This is, this is the get to. You are part of an army of light. And this invincible divine love, nothing can stand in its way when it's burning this bright as the sun within you. And so I'm gonna count backwards and we're gonna bring all of this activation and all of this information and all of this divine knowing with back to your human body completely. It's just like, this is the kind of experience that can become a full body knowing day in and day out as you practice uh, your higher self embodiment and to stand in that circle of light and evoke the masters here with you, walking through these initiations of the Sophia code, you're gonna learn that the spiritual high becomes your daily reality. That light literally starts to operate your consciousness where where you can begin to open up your heart and your mind to co-creating with these masters in and on the earth plane completely flips the script on what it means to be human. It makes being human really exciting, which is saying a lot for star seeds. So let's bring all of the get to from the temple of Sophia back down the shoot of this stargate, right? 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Opening up all of your chakras of your human body and all of these full body knowing of these activations are now integrating within your physical body, within your emotional body, within your mental body, within all of your spiritual causal bodies. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
two, and one. And for those of you who have activated your golden dragon light body, I advise you to visualize the tail of your golden dragon technology, literally anchoring all the way to the center of the earth and feel that star nation, Sophia Christ consciousness, seventh plane, downloading all the way down back into your human form and directly into the heart of the mother earth anchoring it really anchoring it with that spiritual technology and we call upon uh, the consciousness of mother earth and we welcome her to assist us in rewriting our akashic records because the activations that we just received directly from our star families from the ascended masters and the archangels these are permanent shifts and so your timeline on this planet just just leaped you just did a quantum leap and you don't even have to understand what that means. You don't have to understand the details of that. It's, it's, that's not the point. The point is living, is allowing the prayer that is praying you into this new reality, surrendering into the prayer through the light of your higher self. And you're just the angel on earth to do that. So we're welcoming Mother Earth and all of those angelic beings that are responsible for helping you rewrite your Akashic records according to your greatest potential for embodying your sovereign divinity in this lifetime as directed by your higher self, those records being rewritten and sealed within your heart and also within the heart of Mother Earth. I'm also welcoming in a changing of the guard for those of you who have walked with particular spiritual guides or aliens or gurus or any other thing that no longer serves you, feel free to honor and bless your journey with them and allow whatever new councils or family members or angels or whatever the next upgrade is for your reality, it's safe <laughs> to say thank you and let more love in, let more appropriate guides for this chapter in your life to come in. It's okay. It may feel a little disorienting at first. There's a season for everything. You know, there's mentors for different chapters in our life. Change is good. It's kind of the constant, this reality. So we open up our angels. So I also feel those angel wings opening up in the back of your physical, <laughs> back of your heart shock right here in your human body. And I just welcome you to raise them up really high. We do this a lot at the Sophia Club Mystery School. We practice raising our angel wings. And feeling the musculature that's connected into the back, like, like your physical back is actually connected into the spiritual technology of your angel wings. And in this moment, I just invite you to visualize those angel wings coming around and embracing you. Like you can actually give yourself a big hug with those angel wings. I invite you to, you know, you can say this out loud. Like, thank you. I love you so much. Thank you for the courage for coming to earth at this time as a living angel in human form. And if those words are challenging to say to yourself, that's okay, but you should keep practicing saying them to yourself because that will be a part of changing your reality and getting on that path of your highest potential is that self-love, that radical self-love, radical self-acceptance for the star seed angel that you are. Now I'm witnessing that a lot of you have allowed yourself to bring your star families back into this world, to stand with you side by side, just as the Sophia Dragon Tribe are standing with you now side by side. And that's really exciting to me because as a star seed, uh, it's been very challenging for me. I, for many years, I ached to go home and I know a lot of star seeds on this call feel that way. But what if you were just the angel on earth that could open the stargate and welcome your star family to walk with you here in this world? How would that affect the ascension process on this planet? Mm, kind of like a lot. So thanks so much for allowing your star family to be anchored now here in a more physical way in this reality because we love your family and we need your family here. And so um, I give thanks to the entire Sophia Dragon Tribe and all the Ascended Masters, Archangels and Star Nations that are infinitely blessing us here in this uh, sacred space. And I ask for you to seal all of these activations in the light and fire of our Holy Spirit, our I Am Presence. It is done, it is done, it is done. 
for the power of three, a perfect trinity. It is done. And so it is. And I just invite you to maybe give your arms a little squeeze, maybe your legs, breathe into your body, really feel how the presence of how important your body is for receiving something like this. And um, as you begin to come back to a physical reality, it's important to be very kind to yourself for the next few hours. Please be very careful with your with yourself and make sure that you rest and really integrate in, a, in an emotionally safe way. It would be very helpful for what you just received. So thanks for coming to my favorite place in the universe. Sure has been fun to share it with you all. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. What, a, what, a, what a trip man is that fun oh that was very fun <laughs> <laughs> good gotta have gotta have fun right <laughs> wow wow thank you sister oh man you're so welcome filled with so much joy and light right now thank you you can tell when I've come out of an activation because my eyes go, go. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, huh? Yeah, quality on? problem, you know? <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you You're so, so much. You're so welcome. And thank you again for the opportunity to be here for the New Earth Retreat. It's just been such an honor to be here with everyone, both attending mm -hmm. and all of the leaders and your mm -hmm. you we're all very, our whole team is very inspired by your leadership, Jesse. Thank you so much for creating this space, for following your intuition mm. and your higher self embodiment to create a, create the space for so many people to come together and really accept who they are. You're very special. Mm. Many blessings to you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, I think, I think that's, that, that's it. Is there any final words that you'd like to share with the tribe before we before we close off the space? You know, we have a really special journey coming up in January called Transforming Trauma into Soul Power. And I think it, <laughs> it, it's amazing to me how much we're all transmuting this time. So, you know, feel free to check it out on my website and uh, or any of the offerings that we have. Um, they're really life changing. And uh I look forward to continuing to serve your community members in whatever way we can. So thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Just so much love to you. And guys, um, go check out uh, Kaya's uh, website, www.kayara.com. I'll put it into the description above as well. Perfect. And check out all of her offerings. And, you know, if you guys feel the calling, um, I'm sure you guys do after that experience. Definitely check out the, the actual book if you haven't read it already. Um, you know, I've, I've shared so much about it already, but, and, and we all have, but, um, but yeah, if you guys do feel that calling, definitely check that out, especially with integration we're coming up. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, right. Jesse. Thank you, Kaya. See you soon. Thank you so much. Many blessings. Namaste.